Let us pray. Courageous God, if you called us to do something, it is because you gave us the ability, the strength, and the courage to bring it to your completion. That is your resurrection power. Remind us that your call is bigger than us. Help us to reach the unreachable. Lead us to forget what is behind us and focus on what lies ahead of us. Make us press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Help us to endure difficulties, pressing through pain, fighting in the face of evil to bring peace and love to the world. And help us to bounce back even when others might think all is lost. We pray all this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. first reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 3 verses 10 through 16. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, 
Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, be present with us to press on in our faith. And may the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. After college graduation, my pastor hired me as part-time youth coordinator at the church for one year. Through the year, he suggested I look for youth ministry jobs. I enjoyed youth work, but with limited opportunities and several unsuccessful interviews, I just felt I needed more credentials. I sensed God's call to ministry, but didn't feel smart enough for seminary or pastoring. But hearing that seminaries offered degrees in youth ministry, I enrolled in a Lutheran seminary Hearing failure and wondering if it was worth the limitations of openings, salaries, and budgets, I nearly quit. But I pressed on to graduation and faced the challenges of those limitations, serving two years at a church, being released, finding other work until another church hired me, moving to another place, and repeating the cycle again and again and again. Family and friends suggested I get ordained. Well, after Debbie and I married, I joined the United Methodist Church that she attended. Our pastor suggested Eastern Baptist Seminary. I enrolled at Eastern, and after graduation, I received my first appointment as a full-time pastor. I was turned down twice for deacon's orders, I was sent to another church a few years later. The third time, I was approved for deacon's orders. Three years later, I went to the elders' ordination retreat. Three interviews went very well, but one 
was terrible. That night I decided to pack my bag and leave. But as I grabbed my bag, an envelope fell out. It was a letter from Debbie. She wrote, I know you can do this. I'm proud of you and I love you. Well, I knew I had to press on. The next morning, my interview went very well and I was approved for ordination. I had wanted to give up, but by God's grace, I was able to keep pressing on. We all have goals to reach, but obstacles may sometimes be in our way. It takes courage to press on, to press forward in the face of doubt and trouble. But with Christ, we can press on. We can press on with Christ's resurrection power through pain and obstacles to reach our goal, to reach the victory. Now imagine Christ praying in the garden, let this cup pass from me. In other words, I prefer a less painful way to reach this goal. But then Jesus yielded to God's plan saying, not my will, but yours. And the painful journey ended with the goal being reached, with the victory. Paul wrote in verse 10 of chapter 3 of Philippians that he wanted to know the power of Christ's resurrection and to share in his sufferings. Our call is to know Christ's sufferings and resurrection power. And when we know that Christ's resurrection power lives within us, we know then that we can press on even through difficult challenges to reach our goals and bounce back even when others might think all is lost. Sometimes in trying to reach our goals, we are tempted to go back. In fleeing slavery and journeying to the promised land, the tired, hungry, and frustrated Israelites were so discouraged that they said to their leaders, back in Egypt, we had food and a place to sleep. Not realizing they were at the edge of reaching the promised land, fear and doubt had almost made them give up and go back. Paul wrote, forget what's behind. Focus on what's ahead and press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. In chapter 3, verse 14 of Philippians, Paul wrote of the high calling we have in Christ. You see, our call is from God. And since God calls us, God knows that we have the ability and the courage to answer and respond to his call. What is God calling you to do? To speak up for someone? To reach a challenging goal? What is God calling our church to do? How do we reach our goals? With Christ's resurrection power and the mindset of the high calling, we can indeed press on to reach those goals. Let us pray. Dear God, continue guiding us to press on in the path of Christ and to the goal that you have set before us. Embolden us to live with holy courage. In Jesus' name, amen. With our prayers of the people. And as always, after each petition, please, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, everyone was strong with hear our prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, thank you for giving us the gifts to press forward in answering your call. Bless, bless Bishop Scholl, Superintendent Burgos, and all clergy and laity with courage to take the first steps towards your goal for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders and people of this land, including President Biden, Congress, Governor Murphy, and the legislature. Mayor Gimbel, the Township Committee, and all peoples of the world with courage to make peace and justice our first priority. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all courage to be first in using Earth's resources carefully for the sake of future generations and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our families, friends, neighbors, colleagues, and each of us with courage to be first with open hearts and helping hands that we may serve Christ through them and love others as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who are suffering from COVID-19 or other illnesses or injuries, including those we lift up to you either silently in our hearts or aloud in our homes. If it is your will, bring your healing and give us courage to take the first steps in sharing your healing love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, asking your peace upon the grieving, including those we lift up to you, either silently in our hearts or aloud in our homes. Give us courage to take the first steps to share in their grief with a quiet and comforting presence as those who share in Christ's suffering and know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in he whose name we pray. Amen. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised Jesus from the dead, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered near and far, and on these gifts, that in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup, 
we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world to press on toward the goal as your people redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the words which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are with someone at home, please take a piece of bread, break it off and share it with your loved one. If you're by yourself, take a piece of bread and you may partake yourself. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. If you have a cup at home and you're not alone, you wanna share this with your loved one, or if you're by yourself, we will now partake of the cup. Take and drink the blood of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May we be so empowered that we may press on to go out into the world to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Promise. 
Come stand before the throne.